Hello everybody and welcome to Nathan on Shuffle and welcome to my latest installment of New Album Spotlight where I put the spotlight on a brand new prog album and recommend something to you guys that I think you guys will like. So this is a really cool one. Really excited to talk about it today. This is Ryo Okamoto and his new release, Myth of the Mastrophus. Uh, really a cool album, especially for those fans out there of Spock's Beard, if you're a fan like me. Uh, really exciting to have an album that can fit in the pantheon of Spock Spirit albums pretty nicely and has that same kind of feel and flavor. So before I get into that though, I want to recommend that you guys subscribe if you haven't yet to this channel. I do all kinds of prog album reviews, prog news features every week, and shows with my wife where I'm introducing her to prog music. Just a fun time and if you're a lover of prog music like I am, it's kind of a no-brainer to subscribe and be part of this group here. So it's a lot of fun and I hope you guys are having fun, those of you already subscribed and, and watching this video. So thank you guys for your support and let's get into the album. So this is the new Ryo Okamoto album, The Myth of the Mastrophis. Uh, really a fun album. This is quite a span of time between his previous solo album, which was quite a while back called Coming Through, which I also liked a lot back then. Um, but this is sort of a new animal, to be honest. This is something that's really feels like it can be a full band album because of the personnel on board and just because of the sound of it, the scope of it. It's a really cool prog album. So one of the things that this album makes me think about is the nature of the solo album. You know, there's been a lots of bands in the past who their members have decided to go out on their own and do solo albums and it's a chance to basically explore their sound separate from the band that they're a part of. And sometimes I feel like because of the nature of that, it, those albums often don't feel like a cohesive whole piece of music. Sometimes it feels like the solo artist just experimenting and doing different things that he can't do in, in their own main project. And it leaves me thinking that the individuals aren't as great as the collective band that they're a part of. You know, the band is successful because they bring in these disparate influences and combine them in a, in a unique way that makes for something that's greater than the sum of its parts. But because of this album in particular and the collaborative nature of what Rio's doing here, bringing different members from different groups that he's a part of on board and really bringing together all of the Spock's Beard members, uh, minus Neil Morse, of course, um, it makes it feel more as a cohesive band type album. It doesn't have that feeling of a disparate collection of songs from a solo artist who doesn't quite know what he's trying to do with the album and therefore leaves me a little bit wanting and wishing that I could hear a new release from the band proper that they're from. That isn't the case here. I think Rio does an incredible job of bringing together a cast of people that feel like a cohesive unit and feel like somewhat of an all-star band. And the album is constructed in such a way that it feels like an entire work of music and not just a disparate collection of songs that he pieced together here and there. And I think that has a lot to do with the arrangements and a lot to do with the sequencing of the album and just how it was all put together. And from what I've heard, his cohort in arranging and, and finishing writing and doing the lyrics to a lot of these tracks is Michael Whiteman from I Am The Manic Whale, who's an extreme talent. I love I Am The Manic Whale, an incredible group that I recommend you guys check out. And it's cool hearing Michael Whiteman on these tracks featured on lead vocals on a couple tracks, but also peppered in the background vocals all over the place, which are a definite spotlight and feature of this release. So really a fun time is to be had, and I think this transcends the typical solo record because of its cohesion and because of all of the elements that are on display, and that Rio doesn't just take the chance to vault himself up and just do things that show his talent and and everything else he allows these other members these other guest artists to shine as well there's plenty of guitar solos there's plenty of drumming sections that are just really killer there's plenty of great bass work and great vocal spotlights from several different singers and of course Rio's keyboards are very prominent and very featured throughout and he has so many different sounds and styles and you hear these beautiful piano melodies at certain points and these wicked synth runs and other sections and he's just super talented and it's his keyboard playing that really drives this and brings this all together as it should be since it's his album but I think it's really cool how he allows other artists to have the spotlight in certain moments and I think that once again brings that cohesive nature where it's not just a keyboard album where there's just 
every tracks of keyboard solo here and there and it's just an instrumental album that features just all kinds of different disparate keyboards and his style he you know he does that in limited doses where it's needed and brings everything together through his keyboard playing but he allows the other members to shine as well to make this feel like a collaborative effort to make this feel like an actual real album and not just a side project and so that is really appreciated i think charlie griffiths from haken did the same thing earlier this year uh made a very cohesive concept record uh, and really featured a lot of the extra musicians that he brought on board to make for a cohesive album that really feels like it stands on its own and isn't just a pale imitation of the band he's from, you know? And that's what I'm trying to get at with my description here of what Rio's doing. So really cool uh, project, really cool album. I wanted to showcase, because I have it here, I just got it uh, in the mail, so I was excited to show it off. I have the actual uh, release here, the, the physical vinyl copy. Uh, incredible cover art. It's really fun, really interesting. Uh, this big monster, you know, Godzilla-esque, but on steroids. Uh, really fun. Uh, of course, you have Rio featured on the back cover with the track listings. And what's fun is in the inside, you get all of the, the artists that are part of the, the album here. And so it's, it's a great feature of all of the incredible artists that contribute on the album. And of course, uh, I have to show off that I have the red variant which is really really a cool color and just a really good package all all told so really great and really excited to continue listening to it it's been fun listening to it on on vinyl and being able to experience it on that format so uh the other notable thing i want to talk about here with this release is just that it's a joy to listen to it's just a fun fun album and sometimes you need that with all these very serious dark albums that talk about very important mature themes and all this stuff which is important too sometimes it's nice to just get a breath of fresh air and get an album that has an infusion of fun and joy and that's what i felt when listening to this that this is just a joyful album a celebration of life and and of art and it's a really exciting listen through and that's how i've always felt about spock's beard proper that part of what makes them so successful for me as a listener is just the joy you can feel in their playing and their instrumentation and the way they construct music. Neil Morse, of course, carries this on to his solo efforts as well. Just makes for such a fun listen, uplifting in nature that leaves me with a smile and leaves me wanting more and to continue listening over and over again. And it has great hooks and great melodies that catch your attention and make you want to come back to it. And it's just, it's a joyful record that I needed at this time. You know, sometimes I just need that an infectious energy it's just really fun so if you're a fan of, of Spock's beard this is a no-brainer in fact some of the tracks feel like they could be on from Spock's beard records I would call this somewhat of Rio's beard you know it's his version of Spock's beard that's what it feels like in a way that this is Spock's beard but through Rio Okamoto's lens of the way that he views Spock's beard and the way that he writes for Spock's beard and so it's a fascinating look at like one one person in the band's lens into that band and how they view it and the music that they feel most connected to from that band's style. So, and of course you get all of the band members from Spock's Beard contributing here. Um, like I've mentioned, uh, Mirror Mirror, which opens up the album, is already off the bat a very Spock's Beard influenced song. Nick DiVirgilio is singing lead on it. You've got Dave Maros on the bass. You've got Alan Morse on guitar doing all sorts of things with the guitar and, and some great soloing and of course the drum work by Nick DiVirgilio as well makes this feel like a Spock Spear 2.0 song. It could sit right alongside songs from X and, and their self-titled Spock Speared work, something like On a Perfect Day or Edge of Them Between. These are just classic Spock Speared openers during that 2.0 period, and I think this sits right alongside it. Plus, the reference of Mirror Mirror is a really clever callback to the Spock Speared name, because as a lot of people know, Mirror Mirror is the episode of Star Trek where Spock's, Spock actually has a beard. You know, there's some kind of doppelganger or something of that effect spock with a beard and that's the genesis of where the spock's beard name comes from and so but it's just such a great infectious joyful opening track with some great keyboard wizardry you know of course rio is in the spotlight here this is his album and he shines in every track it's a brilliant brilliant song to open the record with turning point continues 
and takes things in a slightly different direction. You know, this is a different lineup of musicians uh, we've got here. Mike Keneally is playing some really quirky, cool guitar work. Uh, the lead vocals by Michael Sadler give an extra different sort of dimension to the music as well. Uh, more of a theatrical touch to these vocals, I think. And then Doug Wimbish and Jonathan Mover on bass and drums, respectively, add a bit of a jazzy feel and, and have a really cool spotlight as well. I like the jazzy sort of grooves and feel of this song, and some of those background vocals really lend to that as well. And it's just really, really expertly constructed and really a fun song to listen to. Uh, Rio, aside from being part of Spock Spirit, has lately been part of a group called Project, which does a lot of really unique, interesting covers of classic prog songs. They've been performing live in various places in the U.S., and so a lot of these members in these middle songs that we have here are from the project. And so, of course, there's a lot of musical chemistry because of his involvement with those people. Um, Jonathan Mover, Michael Sadler, uh, those are guys who are part of that project, as well as Mike Keneally. So uh, really cool to see them come together and to give Rio another group of musicians to pull from to bring this all-star cast to light. Uh, the third track, The Watchmaker, Time on His Side, is the first single. Probably the most straightforward track on the album, just a driving, cool rock song with some 80s-style synth. It sounds like it could be a, a progier version of Genesis in their 80s period. Really great, great single that personifies the record in a great way. And those extra keyboard flourishes really bring the prog uh, atmosphere to the track. You know, more great work from ba Dave Maros on bass. And Jonathan Mover is a great drummer on these tracks as well. Just really cool dynamic rhythm section. Maximum Velocity gives you a little bit of a respite from these more rocking songs that you hear. It starts with more of an acoustic guitar picking and a tasteful lead solo guitar on top of it with Michael Whiteman's voice coming on uh, in a beautiful fashion. It's a really cool start, but then uh, of course it gets heavier and gets more energetic as it goes with some great driving beats and some awesome synth leads from Rio. Steve Hackett is featured on this one with some beautiful, uh, cool lead guitar work. It's really a great piece of music that uh, really gets going as it, as it continues onward and is a great driving song as it continues forward. Really fun and some great instrumental work from Steve Hackett and Ryo Okamoto trading off solos and just making for a dynamic, interesting listen. Chrysalis is another uh, standout track from the record, more of a ballad feel to it. Uh, but still very interesting in how it's how it's developed. Some beautiful piano playing with some flute over the top of it. Uh, some great acoustic guitar plunking with uh, Randy McStein featured on vocals, who's an incredible musician, incredible singer. I love hearing his voice on this record. And this track is just sonic ear candy. It's just so beautiful. With all the heavier, uh, more energetic tracks around it, this is a great, more laid back feel and beautiful song, beautiful lyrics and just really gets into a great groove and, and is a beautiful piece of music. A standout track with some great vocal arrangements once again. I believe Michael Whiteman is to uh, credit for these background vocal arrangements and is all over the vocals on this album and it's really great and really well crafted. And then we reach the big giant epic, the myth of the Mastrophus itself. And this is an interesting tale, you know, told by Nick DiVirgilio and Ted Leonard on vocals trading off throughout the whole song. And once again, we get the the Spock Beard crew. This is the the big Rio's Beard uh, track where they get the chance to do an epic in the style of classic Spock Beard, and it's everything you'd want it to be. It has all the hallmarks of the great classic Spock Beard epics. Really, really brought a smile to my face hearing this. You could say maybe there's a bit of cheese to this. It's a bit. Cheesy cheesy. The story is told in a way that's very straightforward and it's very almost comical at points of this like great big beast and, and how people are afraid he's going to eat them and, and they're running away and saying beware of this big uh, monster and all this stuff. It, it, you know, you could see how there's a cheesiness to, to that sort of vibe in the lyrics, but I think it fits well because in my mind this is similar to a Godzilla type monster movie. And those are all sorts of cheesy, you know, and, and I think that's what's being embraced here and that's the sort of vibe they're actually going for. And it just makes for a fun listen that just is really entertaining to listen to. And the music is just off the charts. There's so much keyboard wizardry going off here and there. Some great vocal work from Ted and Nick DiVirgilio. Just 
a great fun time to be had with with these Spocksbeard musicians and it's just a great well-constructed epic that keeps your attention throughout the whole runtime you never get bored and tired of it it's just cons consistent and fun and who can deny the fun of, of the hero of the story being the singer of a prog rock band singing this beautiful melody uh, that brings down the big giant beast and this community coming together and singing together this memorable melody that's still stuck in my head. It's a great conclusion to the album, to this epic. While I say the story's a bit cheesy and told in a very entertaining way, I think you can draw a lot of parallels, much like Godzilla in the past. You can view the monster as somewhat of a metaphor to whatever you want it to be, whatever evils or ill are happening in your current life, in the country that you're living in, or in the circumstances that you are at, and that really to fight those, those evils, you have to come together as a group of people, and it speaks to the power of the individual who can really make a difference and who can bring together a group of people to bring down these great evils that we may face in society. So there's definitely some depth if you dive a bit deeper into the, the metaphors and the allegories that are being displayed here. So while it's cheesy on the surface and makes for a fun entertainment, there's also some hidden depths and hidden layers, but the music itself is just a joy and a fun fun time. There's so many disparate parts and so many different elements, and it just has a great structure and build, and is all hung together by Rio's great keyboard work that just makes this for such a cohesive piece. I think he's learned from Neil Morse and how Neil Morse constructs his epics, has that sort of feel to it, these different parts, but they all connect and lead to an epic conclusion with an epic... Uh, melody that you just can't forget. It's such a memorable hook. So that is a great piece of work, as is this whole album. It's a fantastic piece of work. If you love classic symphonic prog in the vein of Yes and Genesis and all of these stalwarts, if you love Spock's beard and their playfulness and their golden period of music, if you love just fun infectious prog that just is adventurous and fun and is uplifting this is for you. This is a brilliant record. One of the highlights of the year. I'm so excited to keep listening to it and keep exploring these hidden depths and just continue having a wonderful, fun, exciting time with some great, wonderful music. So thank you guys for joining me. This has been a lot of fun to talk about this record. I really love it. I hope some of you will check this out and hopefully you guys are enjoying the music out there, whatever you're listening to. Thank you once again, and I'll hope to see you in another video. Bye.